What's going on, everybody? Matt Bell here from ContemporaryBaron.com and Rebellion Drums. In this episode today, I'm going to talk about a topic which, for whatever reason, seems to be shrouded in mystery within the Baron world, and that topic is taping and sanding Baron heads. So one of the most common questions that I tend to get, almost on a daily basis even, is, now, why would you want to tape your drum head in the first place? Well, to put it really simply, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of a lot of high pingy overtones, because what we're aiming at really getting is one really distinct plain note. In order to do that, we'll employ electrical tape around the perimeter of the head in order to get that note clarity that we're looking for. Now, what we're doing when we put that ring of electrical tape around the perimeter of our Baron head is we're using a technique that's called edge loading. And edge loading is a really common technique in the world of percussion. So you could find this in concert snare drum heads, for instance. You can find it in drum set heads. And completely in a different realm, you can find it around the edge of a tabla. So do you actually have to tape your Bauron head? Absolutely not. That's the honest answer. Now, the reason I want to tape my Bauron heads is because I use a much thinner drum head. In order to get the sound I'm looking for, which is a really nice defined note and a nice big bass sound, but still having a lot of attack to my sound, I need to use the tape. Now, if you have a thicker drum head, for instance, like an older style goatskin, you may not need the tape at all, and that's totally fine. There's a lot of different kinds and brands of electrical tape out there, but I would recommend that you use one of two brands. If you're in Europe, the Coroplast tapes are really good to find, and they're very, very high quality. If you're in North America, I recommend that you use the Super 88 kind of tape like this by, uh, by 3M. And that tape is super easy to find, especially in the 3 quarters of an inch size. And it's just going to give you a much better result. It's higher quality, and the adhesive is much stronger. So today I'm going to show you two different methods of taping your drum head. The first method I'm going to show you is what I, I guess I would call the more traditional method. And that involves putting the tape over the collar of the drum head. And in fact, the tape will start on the collar and then it'll move inwards on the drum head. This one is the one that, that people use most often on drums. The second method I'm going to show you involves leaving the area where the bearing edge contacts the skin in the first place, on the underside of the skin that is, completely open. And so the, you'll see the bearing edge, and then the tape will come right to the inside of that. That's the method that I use on my Rebellion drums barons, because I feel like it overall it gets a better sound on those instruments. What it does do is it leaves a lot more room for some of the high overtones to come through, which can make the drum a little bit wilder to play overall. But for me, anyway, that's the sound that I'm going for, so that works perfectly. The biggest thing to keep in mind with all of these ideas with taping the drum is that you really just want to experiment and find the sound that works for you. You'd be really surprised at how big a difference it can make when you tape the drum in different ways. It can really totally change the sound, which is one of the neatest things about doing this. The first taping method that I'm going to show you is the more traditional method of taping the drum, which means you're going to tape over the collar first, which is right here. You can see the tuning ring is hitting into the head about right here. And so we're going to tape over the collar this way, and we'll do a whole round that way. And then we'll do actually two rounds more towards the inside of the head. So the things you're going to need, this, these are the things that I use every time anyway. So you need a pair of scissors. You, this is actually a, a sanding block, but what I really need is actually the pin <laughs> that's stuck in the sanding block. Well, you need a utility knife, and then we're also going to need whatever tape we're going to use. So I'm using Super 88 electrical tape by 3M. And like I said earlier in the video, this is the wider variety. So this is an inch and a half wide. So I'm just going to talk you through this as I go, and then we'll kind of fast forward as I tape around the perimeter. So one of the big things that you want to do is when you start your tape, I like to start the tape where it's going to be behind my body when I'm actually playing the drum. So I have the drum oriented in that fashion. And then the tape itself, you can see that I have a little bit of, a, of an angle on the tape. It's not just a straight across. This just makes it a little bit easier to keep the edges down. So basically, I'm just going to start south of where the tuning ring is hitting the head, and I'm just going to go straight around. One of the big things you want to do is use one piece of tape for the entire taping of your drum if you possibly can. It just tends to stick down onto the head a lot better, and so that, that I think, is a, is a good way to go. 
The other thing that you want to do is make sure that you're keeping the heads clean when you tape. So if you can, you want to get rid of all the tape residue that was there before. And you can use mineral spirits to do this. You just want to be ginger with it and not use too much. So I've already cleaned up this head. You can see where the old tape was. And so I'm just going to start taping the head. You can watch me do that now. So at this point, I've gotten around the outer edge of the skin one time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, as I'm moving in towards the middle of the skin a little bit more, I'm lucky because I can see where my previous tape line was. So that's what I'm going to use as a reference. And I'm just going to, as I go around more, I'm going to slightly move the tape inwards until I hit that line. And then I'm going to go all the way around again. And this is the point where you just need to do this bringing of the tape in very gradually because if you don't, you're going to get a lot of wrinkles in the tape. And the good thing with this tape, of course, is that you can always just pull back a little piece back in the direction you went if you get wrinkles. And the big thing, too, with this is you don't want to try to you want to try to not put too much tension on the tape. You can see I'm pulling just a tiny little bit on the tape because the more tension you put on the tape, the more likely it is that it's going to back off the drum. All right, so at this point, I'm just gonna go around once more. I've got this about two inches into the head all the way around. So I'm gonna go over one more time, and this time I'm just gonna follow this inside edge all the way. So I'm literally just gonna lay the tape right over where there's already tape. All right, well at this point we've gotten two layers on the very inside edge, most toward the center of the head. And at this point we're just going to cut off the tape again, and we're going to cut it at an angle like we did before because it just makes it a little bit easier to fix it down. And then we're just going to take the tape and we're just going to lay it down on the head. We'll try to get any wrinkles out. And you just want to try to line it up with that inside edge. And you can stretch the tape a little bit here, but just like before, you don't want to pull the tape too much. All right, so now the tape is affixed down. The one thing that we have left to do on this head is we're going to find any little air bubbles that we can see along the perimeter here. And then you're literally just going to use this pin and you can just pop the air bubbles and smooth the tape out. So I'll see if I can find a couple air bubbles. I know there's a couple on here. So here's one. I'm just going to poke a hole in it and then smooth it out and it'll go right down. Another one here, another one here. And this is an area where the 3M tape works really well. As you can see, I had the tape pulled uh, fairly tight at various times to actually get it to conform to the head. It's a lot trickier to do this with the inch and a half tape, but it leaves less tape lines. So it just depends on what you want to do. I would recommend really use the three quarter inch tape most of the time um, when you're starting out because it's a lot easier to work with. So I'm just going to finish going around the head. Those were the only air bubbles I saw, so this drum is all good to go. Now I'm going to tape a Rebellion drums bar on using the second taping method, where the tape is going to lie just inside the spot where the tuning ring contacts the head on the inside. This is going to require putting down two layers of 1.5 inch tape right on top of each other. So here's what the drum sounds like without any tape.
So you can hear a lot of high overtones ringing out and a kind of sour sound overall without much of a clear pitch. Like I did with the first drum, I'm gonna start the tape in a spot where my body will cover the seam. So right here. You don't have to do this, but I think it looks a little bit better and I think it may actually sound better as well. I'm gonna use the spot where the tuning ring hits the skin as a guide and go completely around the head with the tape two times. So at this point, I've gone around the skin two times, uh, laying the tape right on top of each other. So now I'm gonna cut the tape off at an angle. And what I like to do, you'll see a seam here. It's probably a little bit hard to see on the film, but there's a seam there where I started the tape. So I like to go a little past that seam with this last round of tape, and then I'll cut it off right there. And then I'm just going to do like I did on the other head where I'm just going to lay the tape down. I'm going to try to keep this outside edge of the piece that I'm laying down lined up with what's already there. And you'll see in order for me to line up the bottom edge, I'm having to pull the top edge a little bit more towards the center of the head. One of the nice things about this kind of tape is that it's actually very malleable. So I'm just gonna smooth out all the wrinkles as I go. And as you can see now, there's a little bit of an overlap where I've gone too far into the head. So I'm just gonna take the utility knife. You can see it right there, that little overlap. I'm gonna take the utility knife and I'm just gonna very, very carefully cut that tape off. And my idea is that I only want to go through the tape and I don't want to damage the head underneath it. So utility knife. And we're just going to go very gingerly here. That should have gone all the way through, so I'll just lift it up. This is what usually happens as I go through the second layer of tape, but not the first. So then I'll just find what's still left there the first layer. Very carefully cut that piece. Lift it up and there we go. So we now have a smooth edge here, which looks like that. So now the next step, which I won't show on film, is that I'll tend to take a heat gun, a high compressor heat gun, and I will heat the head from underneath and over top, and that's just to get the glue on the tape a little bit warm and to get it to bind to the head a little bit better. You don't necessarily have to do this. I like to do this just to keep, uh, to activate that tape's glue a little bit more. And then the last step is I'm gonna go all the way around the head, and those couple spots where I can see that there's little bubbles, I'm going to use my trusty pin again, and I'm just going to take those bubbles out. So literally you just pop, stick the pin in the center of the bubble, just going through the tape and not through the head, and then you just smooth it right out and it comes right out. So I start at the seam because it's a good point of reference, and I go all the way around the head, eliminating the few bubbles that I see. Make sure just to press that seam down well, and then this head's all ready to go. So now I'm going to let you hear what the head sounds like with tape on it. So you can hear there's a much clearer sound and a much clearer single note that's coming out of the head now, and that's really what we're after. Sanding may be necessary to take a bit of the roughness out of a natural skin, especially on cheaper drums, and this is on the inside of the head that we're talking about. 
The sanding is almost always necessary on the synthetic head as they are very, very smooth on the inside and your hand's going to stick to them if you don't sand them. So on a natural skin, you're smoothing out the roughness and on a synthetic skin, you're adding some texture to a surface that's too smooth to start with. When you're sanding the inside of a head, you want to go in small circles on the inside of the head only and you want to use 320 grit, fine grit sandpaper and you want to be really, really gentle with it. So you basically would just go on the inside of the head and you're going to start in the middle and just go with very fine circles moving outwards until you get all the way to the edge of the head and you want to just go all the way around and really just be very gentle with it and you'll be good to go.